Hi, this is Michael Fisher, and in this video I'd like to speak briefly about the time value of money. Uh, the time value of money will come up again in different contexts, including compounding and valuation. But in very simple terms, compounding is a, is a concept that links present value, an interest rate or return, or a yield, and future values. For example, if we have $100 and we assume that the interest rate for a one-year period is 3%, then that 100 will become 103 in one year. The 100 that we have today can be referred as the present value, i.e. the value today in the present. The 3% is the interest rate or the return on the money. And the 103, which is what it becomes in one year, uh, can be referred to as the future value, i.e. the value in the future, in this case, one year. So the concept of the time value of money links all of these things. Um, it links the present value, the future value, and the interest rate in this case. Um, and it forms the basis as well for the concept of compounding, where a sum of money earns return again and again and again, growing each time as these additional returns are added to the existing sum, and then a larger and larger return is earned each time as the sum that the return is earned on has grown and is growing. The concept of the time value of money also has a further application. Since we know that the 103 future value is what 100 turns into with a 3% annual interest rate, we could say that 103 in one year is equivalent to receiving 100 to us today if there's a 3% interest rate. In other words, we would be, theoretically, all other things being equal, indifferent between receiving 100 today or 103 in one year <clears throat> with a 3% one year interest rate. Why? Because if we receive 100 today, that would turn into 103. We could turn that into 103 in a year, and if we receive 103 in a year, obviously we'll have 103 in a year. So either way, we'll end up with the same amount in one year. To get from the 100 to the 103, we multiply by 1 plus the interest rate, i.e., 1 plus 3 percent, or 1 plus 0 0.03 or 1.03. So we multiplied 100 by 1.03, which gave us 103. So we were able to get the future value by multiplying by 1 plus the interest rate for this one year period. To get from the 100 to the 103, we multiplied by 1 plus the interest rate, or 1 plus 3%, or 1 plus 0 0.03, or 1.03. So we multiplied by 100 by 1.03 and arrived at 103. So we were able to get the future value by multiplying by 1 plus the interest rate. Inversely, we're also able to go from the future value to the present value by dividing by 1 plus the interest rate. So in other words, the present value is equal to the future value divided by 1 plus the interest rate. In other words, 100 is equal to the future value of 103 divided by 1.03. Using this approach, we can we can use this approach to figure out not only what future values are based on present values and interest rate, but also what the present value of a future cash flow is. So, for example, in this example, we, we can say that receiving 103 in a year is equivalent to receiving 100 today, given the interest rates and the conditions that we've assumed. And we can use this approach to value and to bring back any future value to today's value, knowing the interest rate. And for example, given that a bond is typically just a series of future cash flow, flows, we can assume an interest rate or we can calculate an appropriate interest rate for those cash flows and bring those future values back to present values. And that is the concept of discounting, i.e. bringing future values back to present values. It's the inverse of compounding and it's one of the key valuation methods that we'll look at in a little bit more detail later. If, the, if there was a risk of not being repaid, either, either being paid the coupons or the principal on the bond, then of course the interest rate or the return or the yield that we would have to factor into the equation would have to reflect that, um, and, that that's, uh, and that would all have to be taken into consideration. But in this very simple example, what we've tried to show is the link between a present value, a future value, knowing what money can earn over time and knowing what the opportunity cost of not having that money today would be, i.e. the interest rate. So the main point of this video is just to illustrate the concept of the time value of money, i.e. figuring out what a, what a given amount of money becomes with a given amount of interest over a given amount of time and linking present value, future values and interest rates or returns. 
and linking the present value to the future value in particular by multiplying by one plus the interest rate for the given period of time, um, in this case for one year and one period.